But if that autopsy was all above board, there'd be nothing to stop Lord Strongheart bringing this trial to an immediate conclusion. Objection! Thank you, Ryunosuke, if it wasn't for your frank words just now. This trial may very well have ended prematurely. Kazuma? What's this latest absurdity, Council? My lord, your reasoning is perfectly sound. But for one giant hole. Ho ho ho! He's back! Our boy, Kazuma! I beg your pardon? You claim my father's silence was due to the fact that there was no fabricated evidence. But there's another possible explanation. You've overlooked the possibility that he had a reason for maintaining that silence. Objection! Silence that would lead him. Being convicted and sent to his death. If the autopsy results were an invention, there's no conceivable reason why the man wouldn't have protested. Objection! Oh, those results were an invention, all right. There's no question of that. Or are you forgetting that two people with a connection to that autopsy have been assassinated? <sighs> if I force the grievances I feel from my mind, I start to see you in a very different light. I think perhaps it's you who's been living in delusion these ten years. <clears throat> Me? Kazuma-sama has created one last chance for us here, Mr. Nanudo. If we can only show there was a reason for his father's silence in his trial. A reason why the man would have said nothing, even though he was innocent. Could it have been part of some negotiation, perhaps? Enough rhetoric. The court must be shown evidence. What proof do you have that could possibly explain Azuki's silence in court? He wrote this, his last will and testament, in the prison, before the trial even. He, he already accepted his fate, right? But why? Take that! This is the defense's answer to that question. As I indicated before, my patience for retro- What?! <laughs> that wasn't it! You could have at least accompanied that penalty with an explanation. <laughs> if Kazuma-sama's father... If Kazuma-sama's father knew that the evidence being used to convict him was fabricated, why would he have said nothing? If it were me, I'd have protested my innocence until I was blue in the face. So if we're right about the autopsy results, there must have been a strong reason for his silence. Well then, perhaps he was saying nothing in exchange for some sort of clemency. Ah, that could be it. My lord, the defense would like to... Enough rhetoric! The court must be shown evidence. Huh? Some sort of negotiation. Was it not the Azuki papers? I did present the Azuki papers, right? <laughs> did I not present the Azuki papers? Yes, I presented the Azuki papers. <laughs> okay, that wasn't it. Huh? Okay. What else could it be? Some clemency.
Karma? What? I have no idea. Well, the only thing that's relevant to, to Azuki is his ring. Great sword Karuma. Um, cleanse autopsy report and his papers, right? There's nothing else. This photograph. Why would he stay silent in court? Perhaps he was saying nothing in exchange for some sort of clemency. Um, am I just gonna present Karuma? I don't know why though. I mean the hey, the Azuki's the Azuki papers would make sense, right? Karuma wouldn't make sense. Okay, no, that's not it. Okay. There must be a reason. He was saying nothing in exchange for some sort of clemency. What? Okay, we've had the Azuki papers. Karuma. We have the ring and <laughs> the autopsy report. What? A document in red ink. The ring? Why the ring though? There has to have something... I mean... I think Azuki papers were correct, but... I mean, the question is why did he accept it? Did he accept his faith? fate? Why did he already accept it? His fate in prison. Oh, because oh, I completely forgot about that. There was a plan not to kill him and help him instead. Aiding and abetting the escape from his, from this prison on convict just prior to the... No, 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 no. 
prior to his execution. No. But afterwards, he wasn't killed, right? He wasn't killed. So he must have made a deal with someone. No idea. I need to look it up. I need to look it up. Okay, apparently it's the dismissal note. But I have no idea why. I have no idea why. That was before his execution. There was no deal or anything. Take that! It's true that Genshin Asuki's silence during his trial resulted in his conviction. But that didn't actually lead to his execution. On the contrary, it led to his escape, an escape that was only possible because he'd been sentenced to death. Yeah, but that evidence I presented is referring to before his execution. But yeah, that's exactly what I, what I thought of. Although I find it hard to believe my father would have negotiated in that way, the defense is correct. A fake execution, falsica falsification of a death certificate, and a jailbreak inside a coffin. Clearly such an elaborate plan couldn't have been carried out by my father alone. He must have had the help of a collaborator from the judiciary. I have here the dismissal note of the chief warder who was working in the prison at the time. The notes read, there are indications that a jailbreak was in planning prior to the inmates incarceration. In other words... Oh wait, that was only the planning? No, it's not only planning. Allegedly, he helped him escape. There were suggestions of some sort of negotiation between Mr. Asuki and the British government. In exchange for his silence in court, he was given an assurance that he would be broken out of prison. Yes, with that sort of clandestine agreement in place, I can imagine he would have kept very quiet. Oh, but then he was shot! Maybe that was also the plan of the collaborator. The collaborator tells him, oh yeah, we'll make it so that you'll be still alive if you um, agree to this and we'll help you escape later on. But after he did, after, after he did, the collaborator shot him just like that. What a betrayal. I would go further than that, in fact. I would say that the elaborate jailbreak of Mr. Azuki can be explained in no other way. Order, order. First fabricated evidence and now a jailbreak conspiracy. Of course, because it's all intimately linked. 
The prosecution wishes to summon new witnesses to the stand. Witnesses? People who can testify about a jailbreak that took place 10 years ago. Ah! Uh. Governor Caden and the poor chief warder of the prison. I won't allow this trial to turn into a farce to summon the governor of the prison after all these years. Oh, it wouldn't be any trouble, my lord. What? Father? My dear friend may appear a little rattle petted at times, but I assure you he is extremely thorough. He wired both Barclay and the local prison earlier. Asking Governor Caden and Mr. Virgil to attend the Old Bailey is a matter of extreme urgency. Sholmes did? Mr. Sholmes did that? Uh, are you telling me that both men are unless I'm much mistaken? Waiting just outside the courtroom at this very moment. My lord, you must permit this trial to proceed as you declared it at its outset. You promised that we would stop at nothing to uncover the whole truth behind these disturbing findings. Very well, bring in the witnesses. Make no mistake, I too would like nothing more than to lay this business to rest once and for all. Oh, I do wish he was innocent. He's... I mean, he, he's always pretty intimidating, but I liked his character. Would the new witnesses state their names and occupations for the court, please? I, Barry Gaden, Governor of Barclay Prison. Everyone calls me gossip. I sell jaunty little tidbits. Um, your other persona, if you don't mind. Oh, I do beg your pardon. Of course. My name is Daily Vigil. I used to be the chief warder at Barclay Prison. The reason you've been summoned here to court today is to testify about a jailbreak of the so-called Professor ten years ago. Uh, the Professor? We've already been through all this before, a decade ago. Uh, the conclusion was that there wasn't enough anything into what happened. A convict escaped from your prison, Governor. Hardly what you'd call nothing untoward. Yeah, you even let the poor man go. For that. Oh, well. The convict's death certificate was somehow falsified after he was allegedly ex executed. And he escaped the prison inside his own coffin. A plan of that complexity could never have been carried out without the help of somebody of influence inside the prison. Governor Caden, don't imagine that a passage of time will afford you any protection. Ugh. If it turns out that you were involved in a plot to break Mr. Azuki out of your prison, then of course, the consequences will be very serious. In all likelihood, a capital punishment. What? You don't do capital punishment for that, do you? Again? Hold on, lady, I was... Witness, Governor Caden. You have a critical role to play in the public safety of our country. A great responsibility to shoulder. The significance of your testimony in court cannot be understated. Therefore, think very carefully before you speak. And Prosecutor Azuki. If you threaten the witness again, you will be held in contempt of court. My apologies, my lord. There's no disputing the fact that an intricate jailbreak plot was enacted ten years ago. Clearly you were both involved in some way. 
so you will testify before the court now and explain exactly what took place. Very well. Let the witnesses give their formal testimony. Tell the court everything you know of the plot ten years ago. It was the day that Japanese Chuck was found guilty. The directive came from the prosecutor's office. I assigned the convict to the chief ward of Virginia and put the plan into action before behind the scenes. What what plan? You're not talking about a plan to help him escape, right? Are you? I was responsible for Azuki right up until the night of his execution, but I knew nothing of any plot. I did again. If there were some negotiations between the convict and the prosecutor's office, well, it would carry out my duty for Her Majesty's Great British Empire. This has been a theme this whole game, like people doing what the government tells them to do, like illegal stuff. A directive from the prosecutor's office? Are you saying that was the jailbreak plot? Aye, oh, that's right. <gasps> he just admitted it! Who sent it? Who authorized that plan? I didn't again that. You're saying you don't know? Listen, that wasn't a thing, a boot that the professor case, that wasn't unusual in some way. I didn't uh, ask any questions, I just did what I was told to do. More than that, I couldn't uh, tell ya. I see. But if the jailbreak plan originated from the prosecutor's office, then one thing is very clear. I suspected there were clandestine dealings going on between Mr. Asugi and that office. The jailbreak was promised in exchange for Mr. Asugi admitting to crimes he didn't commit. Third counsel is nothing more than speculation on your part. So, let me ask the defense. Oh, uh, yes, my lord? I fail to see how these witnesses have any more pertinent information here. Do you intend to assert your right to a cross-examination? Of course. Absolutely, I have no intention of squandering a single opportunity, my lord. It seems all you Japanese are fiercely tenacious. Very well. Proceed, counsel. He just openly admitted it! Holy crap! He knew nothing of any plot. All you did was carry out your duty. can't have people blindly following orders like that. Don't you think for yourself? Hold it! And you say you don't know who actually issued the, the directive? Ah, oh, that's right. All I can be sure of is that it was official. But if it was from the prosecutor's office, that narrows down who could have issued it straight away. And it wasn't me. I cannot even say with certainty that it did originate from the prosecutor's office. What? There's no telling where it started. There's a fair chance it came from higher up the ladder. Basically, I cannot give you any indication of who was behind it. You can't be serious. All we can say for sure is that the order must have come from somebody in authority, I suppose. The likes of us on the ground as it were, didn't bother with idle speculation, we just get the job done. Uh, 
Um, you put the plan into action behind the scenes. What exactly do you mean by that? Hold it! So, Mr. Vigil, you didn't know anything about it at all. That's right. My only role in the scheme was as a scapegoat. That's right, isn't it, Governor? Some poor beggar had to take the rap for it. Uh. Alright then, who else did know about the plan? I've not the first idea, laddie. My part in the whole business was basically just dealing with the aftermath. But I would not be surprised if there were other folk in the prison service who'd been given similar orders. So you don't know who else was involved? Aye, that's right. All I can tell ya is that night it actually happened, the person at the reins was Dr. Stevens. Dr. Stevens? Um, Dr. Scythe? Dr. Courtney Stevens? Or Dr. Scythe, as she's known now? <sighs> How why did I have to get caught up in such a terrible business? But you've already acknowledged that orders came from the prosecutor's office to arrange for the man's escape. And there must have been some sort of negotiation as the only explanation. Aye, well, be that as it may, I didn't hear nothing about that. A witness stand is no place for telling what you don't know for sure, I can't that much I do. Then I presume you also know this. Not telling what you do know is a criminal offense. So you were just following orders, is that it? I'm afraid that won't absolve you of guilt here. A man was still killed illegally, even if he was a condemned criminal. You may very well be found complicit in murder, Governor. Governor. What? A man was still killed illegally. What do you mean illegally? <laughs> he was supposed to be killed legally, but he was rescued illegally. What do you mean a man was still killed illegally? So that's what it's to be, is it? Even with the threat of conviction, you won't break your silence. Carry out your duty? Don't tell me I need to press on vigil. Hold it! Did you not notice anything unusual happening in the lead up to that night? Oh, everything was unusual, exception after exception. After all, it was the professor. The man had terrorized the country as never before with his crimes. In order to hide his identity, he was forced to wear an iron mask over his head. Oh, that is a thing then. Hideous treatment. The fellow was surprisingly docile for someone who had taken the lives of five in the country's nobles. Being the chief warder, I was the only person permitted to approach his cell. I can still hardly believe that I was duped by my own country. I believe you jumped from the window of the governor's office when the jailbreak was blamed on you, didn't you? Lost Virgil, I cannot apologize enough. No, Governor. I don't believe you can. It won't change what's happened. And what else can you tell us about the situation, Governor Caden? Uh... Mm, wow, there's nothing here. Hold it! Did you carry out the plan in its entirety? Aye, I did everything I could at the time. As you know, Genshin Azuki was shot dead in Lowgate Cemetery after the escape. Tell me, was that part of the plan too? My instructions were to do with getting the dark out of the jail and nothing more. I can not tell you anything about what happened after that only. Personally, I believe his death was the last part of the plan. Uh. Vigil, are you remembering something? 
Oh boy. Uh, Excuse me. Mr. Vigil, is something wrong? Uh, uh, yes, sir. What can I do for you, sir? He's saluting now. What is that? Some sort of Barkley convention? What Governor Caden just was just saying seemed to upset you. Did it bring something to mind, perhaps? For the last ten years, I've completely blotted out the memories of that time from my mind. I was betrayed by my superiors in the name of my country. Just as my father was betrayed, it seems. But you see, thinking back now, I really can't imagine that the shooting of Mr. Azuki in the cemetery was ever part of the plan. Okay, you can't imagine? You just said you didn't know anything about the plan. What makes you think that? Well, it just doesn't make sense, does it? To make the man admit to crimes he didn't commit with the promise of a jailbreak only to kill him in the end. It does make sense, it's some sort of betrayal. That's treachery of the worst kind, but the point is, if the intention was always to betray him, why would there be any need for all the chicaneries of an escape? Yeah, someone wanted to get him to admit to all the crimes, just like that. So, so the public would not have any doubt that he was the killer. No doubt at all. Ugh. Yes, that's quite true. If whoever negotiated with Asuki never intended to keep his or her end of the bargain, it would have been far simpler just to let the man be executed in prison, as dictated by his sentence. It all happened in that vast chamber of secrets that is Barclay, behind the high prison walls. I suppose nobody knows what really went on in the ex execution room now. Yes, it's an unsettling mystery, certainly. Truth be told, there is a wee matter that never quite made sense to me. If you believe there was some kind of negotiation behind a jailbreak between Asuki and a body at the top, it doesn't quite add up, does it? Huh? Governor Caden, I must insist that you explain these doubts that you have by amending your formal testimony. Yeah, shall I go on then? Oh, he doesn't look too happy about this. Not happy at all. It seems to me that the Japanese fella didn't have nothing to bargain with. Admitting to the crimes, that was what he had to bargain with, surely. I cannot say that myself. After all, did the prosecution now have conclusive evidence against the Carly, eh? This, you mean, discovered during the final victim's autopsy? There's every possibility this conclusive evidence was fabricated. Objection! Possibilities are all very well, but nothing has been proven. Uh, Barak Van Zeeks, I'm the lawyer here. You, you're just, uh, you're just the defendant, okay? <laughs> you cannot yell objection. You can holler about misconduct in the trial ten years ago all you like. But if you can't establish that it happened with hard evidence, no one's going to listen. That's right, so what I'm saying is... The convict had nothing, nothing he could use for any kind of bargaining at all. The witness makes an astute point. Logically, it would seem no negotiation could have taken place. And yet the plan to break the man out of prison was definitely put into practice. So he must have been armed with something that gave him an angle to negotiate. 
So Asuki-san agreed to confess to the crimes because he was assured he'd be broken out of prison later. I really don't think that Kazuma-sama's father would have engaged in such negotiations. Then perhaps something compelled him to agree. What a terrible thing, using the law to legitimize such underhand dealings with a desperate man. Only to double-cross him in the end. It's quite the opposite of justice. I can't help feeling. There's something about this apparent negotiation that doesn't quite add up. Something doesn't quite add up, Mr. Naruto. No, it doesn't. But I can't quite put my finger on what yet. Well, in that case, we must keep digging until we identify the problem. Huh. Do we need to... He did not... He didn't have anything to bargain with. What about the Asuki papers? Mr. Asuki described it as the only weapon I have left. The game wants me to present this thing, right? But I don't see why. Objection! Confessing under oath to murders he didn't commit on a verbal assurance of later being broken out of prison. Genshin Azuki was taking an incredibly risky gamble. Very true. There was nothing to stop the British breaking their word and executing him behind closed doors anyway. Under normal circumstances, no man would stake his life on a gentleman's agreement like that. Which means that Mr. Azuki must have had a trump card. Something that guaranteed he wouldn't be betrayed. Some kind of weapon. Hey, Vash, a fella couldn't have possibly have had anything like that. But you know that he did, Governor. The Azuki Papers, the name given to the last will and testament of Genshin Azuki. Oh. It turns out that Mr. Asuki was hiding his will in his cell at Barclay. Chief Water Vigil caught him with it one day. You, you squeal, did ya, you wee rat? Did I not tell ya to keep that a secret? Holy crap. Please stop. You, you, you can't touch me now. <laughs> 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 oh. oh my goodness. <clears throat> I need to drink some water. Hold on. When Mr. Vigil caught sight of that will through the bars of the convict's cell, Mr. Azuki pleaded with the water. Alright then, but what's on that paper? A last will and testament. This will is the only weapon I have left now. But why? What makes it a weapon? A weapon? And after the convict had been killed following the elaborate pretense of the jailbreak, that document mysteriously disappeared, didn't it? Well, yes, or the prison warder searched through the belongings in his cell, but that will was just nowhere to be found. As I understand it, an exhaustive search was made for the document, which became known as the Azogi Papers. Governor Kaden, I believe you ordered your prison staff to find it at all costs, didn't you? Ugh. Would I be right in saying that you knew? You knew that the so-called Azuki papers had the potential to make great waves somehow. Jakes, what a pleasure are you blathering about? I don't even know myself. The will was found right and proper in the fellow's cell where I said it would be. But how can that be? Where in a cell? We all search the place from top to bottom. Why well, didn't I do a proper job, eh? You peely wally galoot. Please, no violence in court. You, you can't uh, criticize me now. 
I saw it here before. I didn't, did I know your lawyer? Yes, you did. I have the document here. It's written in Japanese and reads, The Last Will and Testament of Genshin Azuki. Which means everything is as it should be. Not quite, my lord. You see, there's an undeniable inconsistency here. What? What? What inconsistency? Mr. Azuki described this document as the only weapon he had left. And yet, this will contains nothing of significance at all. Nothing that would have given the convict any leverage. Exactly. Yeah, what I said. Are you suggesting, my learned friend? That the last will and testament stored at Barclay Prison all these years is actually a fake? Uh. But who wrote a fake? No one can Japanese. Here in London? Right? As has clearly been demonstrated already, what went on at Barclay Prison was far from above board. At last, vilification by the defense was an affront to the entire British legal system. Or perhaps... Someone coerced Jigoku to do that. That could be it. But no, Jigoku was not, the, not in charge back then. He was a visiting student after all. Huh. This absurd notion of a weapon is something for which we have only the former Chief Warder's word. The man could quite easily be lying, or at the very least, sorely mistaken. What? No! I, I definitely heard him say that, I swear! Clearly we need to get to the bottom of this. We need to know exactly what happened with these so-called Azugi papers. A waste of time. If the will was fake, where's the real document? Mr. Vigil was stabbed in the back by the judiciary ten years ago. He lost everything. Very nearly his own life. What do you mean, nearly? Oh, Vigil. Oops, misread that. And now you're going to do it again. You're ready to brand him a liar and turn your back on him without even letting him defend your hi without even letting him defend himself. It's clear that the uh, Barclay prison is hiding something. It's clear that the uh, jailbreak was more someone to be somebody in the prosecutor's office. It's clear that some illicit negotiation took place. Is your lordship just going to gloss over these obvious facts? What did you just say? We should hear more from the chief warder. Have you touched the fire again? The trial must go on. The man's voice must be heard. Testify. <laughs> It would seem that a vocal few here are utterly blind to the truth. Very well then, let the witness testify again. Tell the court precisely what you think you saw of the convict's last will and testament. Y yes sir, my lord. As the warder responsible for condemned convicts, I attended to Mr. Azuki and kept watch over his cell. The night after he was found guilty in the court, he was doing something with that will in his cell. We turned the cell inside out looking for it after the execution, but to no avail. I only found out about the Azuki papers when a directive came telling me to impound them. The document was in the fold of the fella's robe that was left in the cell, a kimono, I think it's called. A kimono. In his kimono? That's... That's a lie. We searched every inch of the man's cell. We looked through all his clothes. It, it just can't be true. Are you not satisfied with calling me a liar the one day? Are we a finger? Hmm, someone must have planted them there. The papers. 
And there's nothing you can do about it now. You don't have any hold over me anymore. Other than the hold you like to take on my cravat, of course. Is that what you're going to do? Is it? <laughs> what is this? A phantom shaking? Are you going to give me a good shake again? Or are you too scared? Huh? 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 Ah! Oh my god. Little and large, what a double act. We compiled with Azugi's will as far as we as far as was possible. All of his personal effects were delivered to his family home in Japan. As a courtesy to the homeland of the most notorious killer our country has ever seen. And we were much obliged. I can confirm that all of my father's belongings arrived safely. Apart from the ring. Oh, and you cannot deny it. the handwriting is that of your old man, eh? Yes, there's no mistaking that it's my father's brushwork. Oh, okay. Huh? So maybe somebody took it and then planted it back. Maybe they took part of the papers. It's missing a page or something. Really? And his last will and testament was the man's last weapon, was it? I think we can safely assume that the convict was merely prattling, knowing that his end was nigh. Oh, look that look at that evil grin. So, counsels for the defense, your cross examination, please. I miss my double slap. Yes, my lord.